Sup guys, I'm Zachary Kane. Welcome back to BWDT. This week, we gotta talk to Greg Woland, who is the lead designer on a game called Threes. I don't actually know how many of you guys know what the game Threes is, but it's the game that spawned 2048 and all of its clones. They're very, very similarly mechanic um, but what's great about Threes, and the reason that it's so praised on the App Store on iOS, is that it's the perfect example of a simple game with a very simple mechanic that immediately draws you in, but is so full of life and so full of character. The tiles are freaking adorable. Guys, go check out Threes if you haven't already. It's not only got this awesome aesthetic, but it's got a phenomenal soundtrack. Like, go check out Threes. But, um, Greg Rowland was one of the lead designers on it, and, um, what's really cool about Greg is he's actually living the dream that a lot of us are chasing. Right out of college, it turns out he started his own company, so if he can, why can't you? Uh, so without any further ado, here's Greg. So, um... Start off, uh, why don't you just uh, give a little introduction to who uh, Greg Walland is and, uh, you know, kind of why sure. we wanted to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Greg Walland. I am a Iowa State alum. I graduated in 2008 with a degree in graphic design, um, which you guys might be interested in. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I've been doing this since then. I, th I think, actually, we started our first company in 2007 while we were still in college. Um, and You started that, while you were in college? Yeah. Yeah. It was myself, Mike Boxleiter, Ted Martins, and Josh Larson. Mm -hmm. And we made a game called or called Dino Wars initially, and but that company was called Intuition Games. So we basically made Flash games. Okay. Um, and then from there, the Flash games world kind of evolved into sort of like an iOS thing. Mm -hmm. Um and then made a number of games with Mike and other people. I made Salt Skier, Hundreds, Ridiculous Fishing, Threes, Basketball, um, most recently a called, game called Touchtone with Mike. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. It's not, okay, it sounds a lot like, it sounds like you've been doing a lot, um, but you graduated with design, right? So what have you been doing? On a, like Whenever you're part of a team, what do you... What yeah, doing? so I'm mainly the artist. Uh, I do like all the website stuff, all the menu stuff, all the uh, art for the game, uh, animation, characters, all that stuff. Um, so it's usually that's how it goes. In the case of our first game, Ted is an art artist as well, so we work together. He mainly did the characters and animation and stuff. So did Josh. He did some some character work as well, but. Um, and then I kind of focused on more of the nitty gritty and the UI stuff. But since then, I pretty much just work with one other programmer, maybe two other people um, on any game. So it's very small groups mm -hmm. and usually different. Uh, like Ridiculous Fishing was ma mainly me and Zach uh, working. He was the programmer, I was the artist, and then JW is the designer, and then Rami did some other like marketing stuff and kind of like business structure stuff etc et mm -hmm. as well as some programming when when needed um, but yeah that's kind of roles how the roles shake out uh, I have like coded my own games and stuff like that I've made a prototype it's called hundreds and then eventually made a game with Adam and Eric Johnson um, Adam Saltzman and Eric Johnson to make like the full version of hundreds mm -hmm. um, and so like I had some more coding in that way like I prototyped the game and so how did you learn coding then how did you do like how did you figure out the coding stuff if you went to school for design did you do it kind of on your own and yeah so like I started out actually in college at Iowa University of Iowa really um, yeah <laughs> so I went there for a couple of years and I was trying to do like writing and I was doing like um, graphic design, uh, studying English, things like this, kind of all over the place. Did like a little studio art, trying to figure out what I want to do. I know definitely that I want to do something creative, um, but ended up sort of not going to class and just stayed up all night and made websites. <laughs> so, like, I just really like, I've 
coded website since I was like 12 or something like that. And I would make like wow. fans, huh. fan sites for like Final Fantasy VII games, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like parroting w- facts and stuff from my favorite games and things like that. And um, so I kind of liked the process, and I thought, oh, I'll go to school for maybe, maybe I'll make websites. So I transferred to Iowa State, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, well, I can do websites pretty easily. I kind of, like, tested out of a website class, and, like, and then I found when I went there, um, like, a game class. I'm like, wow, this is even better, way more interactive, Mm -hmm. and I love games, like, always have, obviously. So... I just didn't even think it was possible to make video games. Like, I thought, oh, well, you need, like, a, pe- a team of, like, 500 people, and they all have to be geniuses or something like that. But at the time, some tools were out. Game Maker was very, you know, in its infancy and, and kind of, I don't know, if it was even usable. Or I, I didn't know about it at the time, but there was this game engine called Torque 2D Game Builder, um, which n- probably nobody knows about it anymore, but... That's sort of it was sort of like an early unity, and that's kind of how that all happened um and I took that class it was like an experimental class, and I took that every semester and then eventually found the v rack, which you're probably familiar with, yeah, yeah, so, quite a few of us are familiar with the v rack yeah, yeah, um yep. so we i don't know i I got a job there and found a bunch of people that were maybe more interested in programming and, and like coding and weird things and then kind of met people that were super passionate about it mm-hmm. through that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gotcha. I think that was the question. I think I meandered everywhere, but Oh no, you're no, you're totally fine. Um, yeah. Uh because one of the things that like with our club we try to get across is that um you can specialize in certain areas. So you can be an artist, be a designer, be a programmer. But it would be, it's a really good idea to kind of spread your wings a little bit and, you know, learn different parts so that you can, you know, not necessarily be an everyman, but it's important to be able to, not only like, it, it helps to be able to talk to other programmers and know what they're talking oh, about. Oh, man. Like that. So big. I mean, yeah, I guess that's the question, right? Like, how did I learn how to code? And, and like, a big part of it was the web design mm-hmm. um, and website scripting but like that's not really code you don't have to deal with logic it's just like this goes here da 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 you're just scripting things Mm -hmm. um but over time you know we worked in flash so i was just i always felt like man the real the real tool or or i guess the the pen and paper of of making video games is programming yeah um so it's really so. I always tried to poke at it, and I got books, and I asked, you know, Mike and other people I was around, like for help if I was trying to like code a little thing, like to make a butterfly flap, just for fun, you know, like oh, let's just try this. Um, and then eventually, what really solidified it most recently is a couple years ago. I sort of got a, I was, I don't know, enlisted a friend, I guess, um, who I'm making a game with now, Benedict. Um, to tutor me and so he tutored me for a couple hours every week and so every week I would have a problem for him like oh this is just I have no fucking idea what this is going to do <laughs> like, um, this is a crazy problem I don't understand it or like what's modulo or you know like yeah. this is weird um, and then we'd go over it and work through it and he would so we would sort of pair program for a few hours mm-hmm. And that was really super helpful, and now I can kind of code enough where all I need is Google and the docs, and yeah, slowly and poorly, but I can get my ideas out, right? Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's super important for things like prototyping. Like, whenever yeah. you just have a small idea, you want to see if it even works as an idea, like, it's a perfect thing to do. Just quick prototype yeah. it up and then get it out. Yeah, and that's taken me a while to get to, but um, I think it's probably one of the best things I've done you know, for myself is just learn that. And also like what you said, just learning how to talk to programmers, um, what they need, why a problem is a problem, why it's, you know, so hard to make a guy find another thing, you know, the pathfinding and all like, Oh yeah. Why problems are difficult. Um, and also why some of them are easy that you might be scared to ask about, you know, like things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
and actually speaking of prototyping, do you do a whole lot of prototyping? Um, I don't really know how much um, you do all that kind of stuff, but is it something yeah, yeah. that is part of your life? It has has been since, uh, I don't know, since threes, I suppose, as when I kind of was able to do the tutoring thing and have more free time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a couple prototypes that I've worked on in Unity, mm -hmm. um, and those are sort of sitting there, and I'm going to make those next after this game. So, yeah, I, I, definitely if I have a really solid game idea, I'm, I'm going to go and prototype it. Um, and and like just even on a mini like scale I guess on a smaller scale I can if I have an idea for an enemy in the game that we're making now um, which is called Tumble Seed it's like sort of like a physics balance bar game um, I can explain it later it's kind of <laughs> but it's much easier to see it yeah um, but yeah basically I can code up an enemy. And I can do it a little poorly. I can prototype it, you know. It's like, but you get the idea, you know. And that's a huge, yeah, uh, step forward in communicating this idea, as opposed to like, what if it was like this crazy guy with teeth and three heads? And it's like, you know. <laughs> um, and I can, you know, before before that, I would do like mock up animations mm -hmm. and like little set pieces, and that would be a way to communicate. But that took even longer in a way. So it almost works as sort of like a proof of concept, thinking like. Yeah. I have this idea, and this just kind of proves that it may not work perfectly now, but we can get it to work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can see where it's headed. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what is kind of your... Uh, what is, so what's your kind of process with that? Like, what do you generally come up with? Do you come up with, like, visual ideas, or is it a game mechanic idea? Or, like, what's your kind of process with this prototyping thing? Um, yeah, so it's almost always... Uh, gameplay systems, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so hundreds was just like this idea of what if you had circles bouncing off of each other? Like that seems like a simple enough thing that I could do. Um, mm -hmm. And then you grow them, and so it's about like filling up space. But when you did grow them, then they would be sort of like dangerous. So if they touched another circle, then... So that was the whole idea. I had that idea in, like, a flutter of, you know, whatever. I was, like, falling asleep or something. Um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do that. Uh, yeah, another one is, um, I don't know, more of, like, a biking game that I've been thinking about because I cycle here in, in the city, and there are so many things that can kill you. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, like, a car door can open, uh, you can hit a pothole if you don't see it, the sun can be in your eyes, the rain can kind of obfuscate the <laughs> ground, maybe you see uh, some glass, but it's too late and it pops your tire, uh, yeah. the car can just run you over, you know. <laughs> and then there's intersections and there's systems, there's all these systems that are, <clears throat> that you can sort of, like, tell uh, you know, like, you can foresee what's going to happen. It's like, oh, if I look in the rear view mirror over here, I know there's a person in this car, let's let's move to the left so that they don't open the door into me, mm -hmm. and I die. So, like, it would just be, like, that's the idea. Uh, and so the first thing, I guess, is just prototype the, <laughs> the yeah. biking and the car lane thing, and just super simple. All my prototypes look horrible. Um, <laughs> Just like gray square, gray cubes. Nobody makes a perfect game overnight. It's just like Rome. No. Nobody makes a perfect game overnight. You gotta start somewhere. Yeah, I mean, nobody makes a perfect game in a year. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, um, yeah, and, sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just think it's super important, like, as a, a, a something to remember. You know, I'm an artist, and I, I do really like to make beautiful things and all that, but it's really important to kind of keep things ugly so that you change them <laughs> easily. You know, it's like, oh, well, I don't care about this, you know, cylinder. Yeah. But if I, if I worked super hard on making it look like a Doctor Who, like, TARDIS or something, like, I don't know, like, it would just be, oh, well, I don't want like, to, we got to have it. that in the game still, you know? Yeah. Like, um, but no, it's actually, it's really cool that you mentioned all these things, because one of the things that we... Um, kind of promote in our club as well and well, okay maybe not we i shouldn't say we i promote in our club a lot is this is an idea book 
Like, keep an idea book because inspiration can come from absolutely anywhere, and you're never going to remember your best ideas. Uh, that's how I phrase it anyways. Um, but yeah. I always say that. And so you just kind of gave perfect proof that you can literally get expi- inspired from absolutely anywhere, from cycling to uh, to butterflies to Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's... And, and like, sometimes, you know, like, one of... One out of every ten of those ideas is good, but you don't know until you prototype them. Too. Yeah. Um, and like keeping a big list is super important. Yeah. I think that's that's really good advice. Mm-hmm. Um. So actually, now, and I think this is going to be um, this is it's you're a really interesting person because um, uh, you kind of did what we all hope we can one day do, which is start our own company. I think everybody has that little glimmer of hope. Oh, maybe I can be the next indie darling. Um, but why? Uh, um, it would be horrible to just say, "Why don't you talk about that for a minute?" But, um, <laughs> like, what was it? First of all, did you start? So you started in college, actually. So it wasn't like right out of college. But like, where did you start? I guess is a, maybe a good question. Yeah. Um. um. Yeah, I mean, it was horrible. I was horrible at what I did, and I was I had horrible ideas. Um, I started by... So I took that game course every semester. Really? And yeah, that, that experimental game yeah. course. I actually am fairly certain it's still being offered here at Iowa State, folks. So go look it up in the catalog. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's still here. I took, I took that, and... Um, it's very open. It's almost like self-directed. At least it was. I don't know what mm-hmm. they're doing now. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't had time to look that up actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, it basically served as like, oh, well, this is a group of people. Every like twice a week, you know, we're in class, and now we talk about games and the game we want to make, and we try to make it. Um, and so the first game was like. <laughs> a George Lucas style chir- like epic proportion trilogy stupid thing like the first thing was a Zel- a Wind Waker like Zelda game but fully different you know fiction and, <laughs> and it's really fun to like think about the world and then the second iteration of that game is like oh well, we gotta have the RTS after the fact when you grow up and then you're like a commander of an army that it's like yeah um <laughs> but <laughs> um, that was just, you know, I guess you have to get that out of your system. Yeah. Um, and then the next one, and also, that was a time when indie games were just, like, no, it wasn't really even a thing. Yeah. Uh, they, like, Aquaria was out, which I don't know if you're familiar with, but that was, like, one of the first big proof of, like, oh, this can work. Uh, mm-hmm. it's by Derek Yu, which I'm... Hope you know, like Alec Holoko, get nice Splunky. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Derek yeah. made Splunky. Yes. Um, made in Game Maker, folks. The same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like that was that was really inspiring, but um, so that's where we start. That's where I started, and I had like a huge game design document, which is a no no. I think uh, I did all the things wrong, and I did it with like a few of my friends. And then we eventually made tried to make another game and another game, and that wasn't until I got to the V-Rack that we made Dino Wars. And um, that was... I'll just sort of take you... Because, you know, it's important, I think, to illustrate that it doesn't happen overnight, like you said. Yeah. Um, so Dino Wars, we started just before my senior year at ISU. Mm-hmm. And it was a Flash game, a one-on-one uh, sort of real-time tactics dinosaur game where you fight each other and it was multiplayer through flash and it was stupid big to to break off for your first game yeah we spent a year and a half on it and the only reason we could do that is because we were lucky enough to get sort of like this funding from congregate which Mm -hmm. is a flash game website yeah it's actually still around yeah 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 yeah. so you're familiar like new grounds um and so that's what really was a lot of our lifeblood in the beginning. And then after that, we're like, we're never making another multi-year project. So all our games took like two months um, to make. And also, we were way better at it. Yes. I think, all told, we made probably like eight or ten Flash games after that. 
Um, so we made a lot of games. Then we find Mike and I finally made Solves Gear. They're like, oh, this could really work on the phone. You know, like if you just, it's just a mouse game that you draw the slopes and the yeah. skier kind of, yeah. Um, and then that did really well on iOS for us. And then it's like, oh, well, screw Flash games. <laughs> uh, we're going to do games where we actually get paid per, you know, we want to get a cut of each sale, you know. Right, yeah. Um, so we live and die by how many people play our game. Yeah. Um, as opposed to live and die by how much a sponsor likes our game, which is how the flash market works. I don't know if you guys are familiar at all with, with that. It's kind of a little bit of an antiquated... Yeah, flash isn't really much around anymore. Like, Newgrounds yeah. and Congregate... It's funny you mention Newgrounds. But Newgrounds and Congregate are actually still kind of like the only ones that have survived, other than like the small ones that kids use to play at school to instead of doing homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, I mean... There's probably some ad stuff there, but even like behemoths such as, um, you know, what's the one up in, oh, they do like a bunch of pixel art games. Nitrum? I don't know. Uh, Nitrum is iOS. Yeah. That's, um, oh, but they used to I do might a ton know of what you're talking about. <laughs> they do a lot of like smaller but really polished um, games, and now they do iOS games completely, and it's all freemium, and so they've evolved too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then... Solves gear took about six months or so, and then Mike and I did basketball, and then I did this other game called Infested Planet. Uh, just some of the art, and then I don't know. I I think I've made about twenty five games, but it was like the wow. twenty twenty second, which is like hundreds, which was really it did. Better than Solve Skier, and then Ridiculous Fishing came out, and then Threes after that, and it was like... Mm -hmm. So I got very lucky, or I guess I learned how to make games <laughs> after the 20-some games. Um, so that's sort of how I became an indie darling, is just like <laughs> one... You know, like one rung at a time. Um, I think the first game, other than Dino Wars, we sold, made like $2,000... Um, wow. Which, you know, isn't really a ton because it, it took us two months to make. And between two people, it's like $500 a month. Yeah. That's, you know. Um, so, like, that that was sort of how we started. And it was sort of meager, but it was enough to be like, okay, well, maybe we'll make another one. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I mean, that's, that's really solid, especially, like, for... Um, for a lot of us, you know, um, we're just kind of now, as a club, figuring out we just need to make games. And um, a lot of people just will kind of get disheartened or uh, uh, kind of lose steam. And mm -hmm. it's uh, it's great to hear somebody like you, you know, encouraging just make a bunch of games because that's one of the best practices you can do. If yeah. you watch these YouTube videos, well, not you specifically, if anybody watches these YouTube videos, you'll pretty much hear as a consistent theme, just make games. Like, all you developers are saying, just make games. Do do stupid prototypes. Make the bad <laughs> games, because they're the best practice you can do, and yeah. it's just, it seems to be the most consistently told way of being a game designer, which, you know, sounds self-explanatory, but... Yeah, no, yeah. for sure, but in the end, it's... There's so many moving parts and so many roles it takes to, to make a game. It's kind of daunting sometimes, so it's yeah. sometimes easier to kind of nestle into a longer project um, yeah. in a way. Uh, um, and actually, we recently started offering those for our club. We now have semester-long projects that anybody can kind of jump on for that. Because not everybody uh, has yeah. time to do, like, the two-month stints. So we have something that lasts all semester, and then people are in and out. It's really cool. Yeah, that's um, cool. But no, yeah. Um, so, actually, with the whole Dino Wars thing, how did you go about getting sponsoring from Congregate? If somebody, you know, was going to jump off the deep end and try to make games out of college, um, how did yeah. you start with that? So that's something I wanted to talk about, because it's like, Flash is different now. Yeah. And so... Like, so we made this game, uh, our second game, I'll go back to Dino Wars in a second, because okay. it's a little special case, but the second game we made that made, like, two grand or something like that was called Wild and Free EX, and it's just, like, it was just, like, this dolphin game where you dive down and arcade stuff. Now, 
we yeah. got like two grand for that, right? Mm -hmm. But if that's on iOS today, I don't know if it does make two grand, you know, because it needs to have visibility. It needs to be like featured in some way. How do you get the word out? Yeah. Because you need to get sales or downloads or whatever your system is. Whereas in our day, um, flash sponsorship, you know, sometimes these sponsors take a gamble on you or, or at least they're like, they're more willing to get, to be like, here's two, here's a couple grand. Mm -hmm. It's not much. Like upper limits on that stuff is like 20 K for a game, which is much lower than it is the upper limit on iOS. Right. Yeah. But it allowed us to be very, um, I don't know, quick with our game production. So we could be like, Oh, well, it's likely we'll get a couple grand minimum or something like that. Whereas yeah. if we make like a game of that we think is of decent quality. Um, so that's where I think it differs. Although I do hear flash sponsorship still happens. And I think, um, it's something that you should definitely look into. It's called, if you can go on this game, a uh, site called flash game license.com. Mm -hmm. If you have you, are you familiar at all? Or? I, yeah, I'm not. Okay, but so I'll probably put the link down in the description. So you should definitely check it out if if you're new uh, and like made you can make games in Flash. It's like worth checking out. But you essentially put your game up on uh, on a website, and then it's like an eBay auction. These sponsors be like, "Oh, well, I'll, I'll pay five hundred dollars for an exclusive license," and all they're paying for is pretty much just an ad on the front of the game that clicks back to their site. That's it. So, like, when you open up a game on a Flash site, it says sometimes, like, Armor Games, and it does the thing, or, like, <laughs> Congregate Ant oh, crawls up, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's what they're paying for. And they sometimes they pay 15 grand for that. Wow. Um, and, you know, that's that's not really the norm. I'd say around yeah. five to $1,000 is, no, like... Yeah. Um, but, and then sometimes, you know, like, you just don't get any play at all, and that nobody wants it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, that is certainly something that can just be like, well, you know what, if we live cheap and we buy ramen and we, like, you know, can yeah, our rent's, like, a few hundred dollars a month, then maybe we can make this work if we make a game every few months, you know? Um, so, like, back to Dino Wars... That was sort of like a weird thing. It was, I think, I think during the Flash boom, yeah. um, where Congregate was just starting, and they were making this premium developer program. And the premium developer program was basically like, uh, we'll give a team, like, you know, between fifty and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to make a game, um, and then and it's and basically we're we're accepting prototypes, we're accepting pitches, um, all this stuff. And so we gave him a pitch with a, uh, Ted made like a, what was it? What's the, a Sculpey, uh, Stegosaurus with a, a surface to air missile on its back. <laughs> um, and then we made some concept art and a prototype and packaged it up and really nicely. And they accepted our proposal. And there's a little bit of a diff uh, funny story with that because, we also were pitching to Adult Swim, and Adult Swim is another thing. I don't know if you're familiar, but yeah, they actually do. Um, they actually are a little bit more into the games actually now. I think they are like a very, very kind of almost like a low tier publisher now. Yep. Um, yeah, they Adult Swim is still a thing, very much a thing. Yeah. So at the time, Adult Swim was just doing Flash stuff because like the iPhone wasn't really um, that. Yeah. 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 Um, and. So like we were we were pitching Adult Swim and um, the guy that was accepting proposals at Adult Swim actually went to Congregate and then so he denied our proposal at Adult Swim and then accepted it at the con at Congregate. <laughs> so he got the same thing twice, which is just funny. Um, but yeah, we ended up like you know in some ways like I think the thinking on their end was oh well this is a, a gamble for let's let's take a risk on on these indies that are really promising and they, I think they did it with about five projects of varying scale. Yeah. And, um, it was really great. And 
we owe a lot of our career and, and like our ability to just to step out like we did to congregate taking a risk on us. Um, so yeah, that was, that was great. Um, but I'm not sure that, I know that doesn't exist anymore for congregate, but I think also, like you mentioned, you know, that's a, that's a definite angle. Like you could, you could maybe talk to some people over there or, um, you know, I think it's a different landscape though. And it's always evolving. And actually, um, kind of along those lines, there are new or not, there are some other ones out there. I don't know if you've ever heard of like world nine gaming. Um, but they're mm. another uh, kind of like low level publisher. Um, okay. If you've ever heard of No Time to Explain, um, or seen that game, that it rings a bell. I don't know if I've see uh, you. The they're kind of their biggest stunt for marketing is they're one of the sponsors for the Games Done Quick marathons, and um, but yeah, so that's how the main reason I know about them. But they're kind of like yeah. a low level, and I, I don't like that phrase low level. But they they are a smaller publishing uh, company. And so mm-hmm. there are still routes out there for that kind of uh, that kind of thing, um, and I highly encourage our viewers to go look at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Them. Yeah, yeah, that's like a big, big that's a big deal. Just like trying to find a way to to you know that first step. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can find a way to you know just have it mean something financial, you know, it's a business in the end, and you want to try to to at least make the next game that's always the goal um and the the lowest friction step you can make is is i think the best one especially for your first step yeah um but yeah i don't know that's sort of how we started out and and like um the next that was like the first phase i think is a little bit lucky but i do think you could skip to that whole thing of like making small games whether it be for Flash or iOS or, or maybe even just selling them on your own website or doing a Patreon and doing like, hey, we're making a game every month. Here's a Patreon link and like would support us and like maybe your games are popular enough where people want want to subscribe. Yeah. But the other end is like the trend is like Kickstarters and, and big Steam releases and things like that. And I think that's in some ways, I don't know if it's dangerous, but... You know, it doesn't have to be that way, to, to especially your first game. I don't think it should be. Um, it's just a lot of pressure. You know, you've got to get greenlit. You've got to make a huge uh, press push and marketing push before you've even made your game. And you don't know how to make games, and you've never shipped a game. It's like it's a lot to promise in a Kickstarter. It's a lot to promise in a greenlight, even. Um, so, yeah. That's my that's my soapbox. <laughs> yeah, it it I mean, it's a definitely a changing landscape out there, or like an evolving yeah. landscape. So um, there's yeah. always going to be new ways to look at funding and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's cool to it's cool it's cool to be able to get talk to somebody who has actually done this kind of stuff before. <laughs> um, yeah. Because like I said, um, we're trying to get exposure. Um, but I actually don't have too many more questions. You, okay. I had a lot of like segmented questions that you did a really good job of <laughs> combining all, like <laughs> answering them all with like one answer. Um, yeah. <laughs> so great job on that. Uh, but before we finish up, um, you get to be asked the honest or the honorary question we've asked everybody yet. But what is your favorite video game ever of all time? <laughs> oh man. Um, <laughs> well, I have like a, a stock answer. Um, and that's probably Baldur's Gate too, Shadows of Om. Um, but Pillars of Eternity, and, and I kind of, I'm going to stick with that because I've been playing Pillars of Eternity, not most recently, but like, I love that game. Um, and it just like scratches this itch that I realized I was, I had for a long, long time since playing Baldur's. Um, yeah, I don't know. And it's funny because... And my friends know this, like, I don't really read anything in video games. Um, but those games have so much writing and story, and I actually read it, and I don't know why. But, uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, because, I mean, I don't know. I might say Spelunky or Killer Queen as well, but. Well, cool. 
Uh, thank you very much for uh, this chat and everything like that. Yeah, um, thanks, so, Zach. No, it's it was fun. fun. Thank me. I had it. I, what am I offering you? <laughs> you are giving us everything. Uh, it's, here. it's nice. To, it's, <laughs> it's nice to talk, talk to someone. someone. I'm locked, locked in this cube. <laughs> it's just me in here all day, all night. That it's sounds nice to see horrible. Your voice and see a face. <laughs> Hello, people. Welcome back to Enslay. Um, thank you so much for sitting through this episode all the way to the end. You're awesome. Um, huge, humongous shout out to Greg Woolwind. You're a fantastic guy. You're living the life. You're you like you're live like you're you love what you do. You're and it shows in your work. And like you're like we're so jealous of the life you're living. You're living the dream. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking to us. You are awesome. Uh, thanks, man. Okay, um, but other than that, um, I wanted to apologize because this, I'm sorry for this episode being late. I had, I was really busy. I had a lot going on. There was like four days. I was not even in the, like in the state. I was in the country. I was in the state. Um, but I didn't just, I just didn't have time to do this. So thanks for bearing with me. Like, don't, thanks for not giving me crap about it. Thank, just thanks. Um, but, uh, I also wanted to mention, uh, if you guys, like, to make sure this with anybody you think would be interested in this kind of stuff, in game design or game development, um, we want to make sure we're reaching the right people, you know, people interested in game design development, so if you have anybody who's interested in that stuff and want to get into the industry and wants to see what it's actually like or get some advice, definitely show them these videos. That's why we make them. That's, that's why we exist as a club. That's, that's what we're here for. Um, but yeah, again, shout out to the Yeti, and I want to make this clear, I, we are not, like, actually, like, a, like, we're not officially sponsored by the Yeti. Like, I, like, we're not getting paid by Yeti at all. We're, like, at all. I just, we just love the Yeti that much. I, like, every t-shirt that I wear in all these episodes is a Yeti t-shirt. They have awesome, hilarious t-shirts. Go check them out. They, and they stand for so much great things. Like, every year they sponsor Games Done Quick. And, and I love that because Games Done Quick is doing huge things. And so, yeah. Um, I guess I'm signing off. <laughs> My pop filter fell. <laughs> I'm out.